okay uh, let's uh, start today's class uh, and the last class we just i just introduced you all to uh, hardware flow chart uh, so today, today we'll get into the uh, details of uh, how to make an uh, hardware uh, flow chart so let uh, recollect uh, what we uh, learned uh, last class first uh, what is the uh, objectives of the flow chart okay a uh, flow chart is just an uh, rtl uh, implementable uh, language uh, that means uh, it is not an uh, high level language uh, it is a kind of language uh, which the uh, hardware uh, engineer finds it easy to uh, implement right uh, so we have an uh, sent, uh, set of uh, instruction set uh, not languages which is available uh, isas are which are available uh, which we need we are going to use to uh, meet the specific requirements okay specified by the uh, user uh, so uh, how to implement an hardware so uh, first and foremost is uh, so all the uh, isas which we have uh, we need to write it in an rtl format okay implementable language uh, for example uh, this is an example which is given rx uh, that is the contents of rx through uh, a bus bar needs to be written to uh, alu uh, so we are going to make an uh, flow chart that means uh, first and foremost the user has given uh, certain specifications to meet those specifications we are going to uh, first as a starting point assume that there is a uh, set of instructions which we can use so those instructions we are going to map it into a uh, flow chart so um, uh, uh, flow chart is nothing but uh, how uh, is an implementation of the uh, execution uh, unit and the uh, control unit okay we will see that in details in you know, and when once we uh, do one or two examples it will be uh, very clear so uh, essentially flow chart is just an uh, rtl implementation language which it is like a, a drawing a schematic instead of drawing an uh, circuit diagram uh, okay we are going to write it in this format for the hardware imp, uh, you know, engineer to implement it okay uh, so the objectives of the flow chart is like uh, no, it it because based on the specific uh, purpose, like we are not going to make a general purpose microprocessor. Uh, based on the user specifications, uh, we are going to make a flow chart, and accordingly the hardware will get uh, implemented. Uh, and since it's not a general purpose microprocessor, uh, since it is user, uh, no, it, it is targeted to meet only the user specifications. Uh, the size uh, no, uh, will be small. Uh, it will be faster uh, and the project will get uh, completed as early as possible right and and the flow chart will be easier uh, to for the hardware engineer to uh, implement okay uh, so uh, to st to start with there are some uh, starting uh, necessities uh, like we it's a certain inputs are assumed and uh, that is available and uh, from there the start uh, flow chart and uh, uh, starts okay and the first assumption is that we need to uh, uh, take a set of instruction set and assume okay these are the instruction sets which i am going to uh, use and as i uh, keep trying to meet the user specifications the, if, if there is a requirement of uh, increasing the instruction set then i might uh, increase an, uh, it and add few more uh, no, ISA, uh, uh, isa commands also but i uh, will start with a minimum set of instructions uh, and then I keep building upon that. So, uh, if I say instruction set uh, uh, summary, right? And uh, there are uh, no, like uh, I take a minimum minimal instruction sets to start with, like and, uh, no, uh, add and, uh, no, sub and so on. Uh, and then also uh, the addressing modes need to be uh, no, uh, specified. Like what are the kind of addressing modes and uh, which. Uh, now I am going to use a base plus displacement register indirect indexed and so on uh, and then uh, total number of registers uh, which are uh, be, uh, we, which can be used okay so these are some of the basic assumptions which I have to uh, make and and based on these assumptions I keep making the uh, flow chart and it, and if I find that the flow chart is becoming uh, complex um, or there is a, or I am not able to meet the user requirement then now i can add a uh, few more uh, uh, instructions okay uh, similarly the execution unit also needs to be uh, specified uh, so what are the programmers register uh, what are the additional registers which are there uh, and uh, what is an uh, what are the functions which the alu can do whether it can do and or addition uh, can it do uh, shifting right now uh, what are the internal uh, data paths and uh, how many internal data paths are there and what are the uh, rules of operations okay so uh, this is the uh, initial condition which we have to assume okay these are 
available to us and from there uh, we start the flow chart okay so uh, we will discuss this in slightly uh, more detail uh, so we are going to assume that this is the an uh, uh, execution unit uh, which is available to us okay there is a set of uh, specifications we are going to assume this is the very very uh, basic uh, uh, execution unit which 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 will be there in any case you can't be it can't be lesser than this so we start from here uh, and then we start uh, meeting the user requirements and then if you find that you know, okay uh, there is uh, no, uh, we can't uh, no, uh, we like for example there are two internal bus uh, and then if we find that uh, two internal bus are not enough then you uh, for for a specific uh, certain application then you might want to uh, add one more internal bus uh, or for a certain application you might uh, find that only one internal bus is uh, uh, good enough then you may uh, reduce this also right uh, similarly so let, let's see uh, what are the basic uh, blocks which will be uh, available in a uh, minimum execution so this is known as uh, a minimal execution unit block so we'll see what are the things which are mm, available uh, first and uh, foremost is uh, alu so we, you know, so there will be an alu uh, which will uh, do certain you know, operations so uh, we will see that in the next slide okay so let's see what are the other things which are available in the uh, then you have an uh, data out and uh, buffer okay so this is the uh, data out buffer uh, so what it uh, does is uh, whenever some uh, alu does an operation the results of that uh, needs to be uh, placed into the data out buffer and from here uh, through the external uh, data bus the data uh, is go goes to the external uh, memory or to the input output devices so this is known as the uh, data out buffer uh, similarly whatever data is coming from the memory uh, that will uh, come through an uh, data in register okay so this is known as the uh, data uh, in register so these are the uh, data out register and data uh, uh, in register okay uh, now the alu uh, can get data okay uh, uh, like the if this are, uh, we are assuming this is a risk processor alu can uh, only uh, uh, no, do operations between contents of uh, two registers so i i, I have uh, n number of registers i am assuming r0 to uh, rn and that data can be transferred to uh, alu uh, either through the uh, internal bus uh, uh, a or through uh, internal bus b so uh, two uh, buses are there obviously uh, two data cannot be simultaneously uh, come through uh, one bus uh, but uh, at, at the same time say r r0 is transferring to ale through uh, internal bus a uh, that is possible and r1 is transmitting uh, data uh, to the ALU through internal bus B that is also possible right so these two buses can uh, operate uh, simultaneously uh, suppose the data from ALU through data bus B is going to DI okay uh, and and say from some register some data is going to the uh, DO so all those things are uh, possible uh, out here right so some data can be loaded into register right so the, and from the register data can uh, go uh, to the memory so uh, memory to register that transfer is also uh, permissible right so that also uh, happens through the internal bus uh, through the data in any uh, data which goes to the external memory and comes back okay that happens through the data out and uh, data uh, in operation okay uh, now the alu like i said it can do uh, register to register an uh, operation uh, also there is an uh, input to the uh, alu uh, k okay uh, and and k can take in values of an uh, uh, zero uh, plus one and minus two okay uh, that is because uh, 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 many a times we find that uh, we have to uh, do uh, plus one minus one or you don't have to do any changes uh, so th this data is generally required very often like for example the program counter so every time an instruction is executed you increase the uh, contents of the program counter plus one so in those cases we use this in a, a, a k also okay uh, so uh, that is about an a, a k okay now when we are uh, uh, na, uh, calling for an uh, memory okay when whenever we are uh, taking uh, we want to uh, na, uh, bring in some data from the memory and the thing is uh, first we need to uh, uh, place the uh, address of the memory in the uh, address uh, na, uh, ao buffer okay address output buffer okay uh, and then once you uh, place the address of that memory out here then that memory will provide the data into the 
uh, DI register through the external bus. Okay. Uh, similarly, if I have to write a data into the memory, uh, again, uh, I will put the address into the address bar uh, and then uh, in that case, the data will be placed in the uh, DO uh, out. Okay. Uh, is it understood? Okay. Now, whenever I have to get some address from the memory, uh, I will put the address first into the address bar. So, that will activate that particular memory, external memory. So, once it is activated, the data will be placed into the DO, uh, DI register. Right? Uh, similarly, if I have to write some data into the memory, I am going to put that data into the DO register and then again put the uh, address uh, uh, corresponding to that memory here. So, for any uh, memory uh, read-write operations, now, uh, AO register will contain the address of the memory uh, and in case we are reading an operation, the data will come into DI and if you are going to write it into the memory, then that data which is re being written into the memory uh, will be put into the uh, 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 DO. Okay. So, okay. Uh, now, the uh, uh, next uh, uh, registers which are available is, see, uh, whenever an uh, uh, ALU uh, does an uh, computation add and or uh, with uh, two uh, no, datas uh, that is the data from two registers the output of the uh, ALU uh, will be available in uh, T1 register ok uh, so uh, that is uh, th this is the minimum execution uh, 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 block in which the output of the ALU will be available in uh, T1 ok and then from T1 we can move it to uh, any uh, register so this is uh, some of the basic assumptions we, from where we uh, start ok uh, so that is about uh, T1 and there is uh, something known as uh, T2 register also uh, there are, these are temporary registers ok uh, T2 is uh, another register uh, in which when we do the uh, uh, like uh, suppose <coughs> uh, we are uh, getting the uh, data from a memory uh, whose address is given in a uh, register ok uh, so uh, when we decode that uh, uh, address that uh, data of the register is also written into a uh, t2 so when uh, right now it may not be very very clear but when we uh, take an example it will be uh, clear ok uh, so uh, we will leave that uh, t2 uh, use of t2 uh, slightly uh, no, uh, we will just uh, keep it away for the time being we will take it uh, on when we uh, uh, discuss the, the uh, example specific example it will be clear ok uh, that is about uh, T2 ok uh, now about a uh, program counter so a uh, program counter uh, always gives the uh, no, uh, no, no count of the uh, address it gives the address of the memory from where the next instruction requires to be uh, fetched ok uh, so, uh, so you have one thing which we need to uh, remember uh, here is most of the processors they like they work in uh, pipeline configuration that means uh, while one instruction is being uh, executed okay, the program counter will actually uh, point towards the uh, next instruction right so uh, next instruction so uh, so that parallelly uh, that next instruction is being uh, fetched by the uh, IRF okay uh, what is IRF stands for? it is uh, instruction register for fetch ok. Uh, so, while I am doing some uh, addition and uh, subtraction or AND operation parallelly uh, this will be pointing out towards the next instruction. Uh, so, so this will what it will do is it will allow the IRF to get the next uh, instruction because you do not have to waste time right. So, there will be an instruction uh, decoder also. So, uh, while the ex uh, one uh, execution unit is, is undertaking one arithmetic or logic operation um, parallelly uh, the data from the PC uh, will be fed to the instruction fetch register it will fetch the next instruction and it will be uh, given to this register uh, IRE which is known as instruction register for execution that means uh, from here the instruction will uh, get uh, decoded uh, so that by the time uh, this uh, ALU completes its operation uh, the next set of you know, uh, uh, execution task is ready uh, you know, so, so that parallelly these things keep uh, happening ok so this is the thing which we need to uh, remember uh, so, so if you remember these uh, how this uh, block functions only then uh, we will be able to make the uh, flow chart ok uh, so uh, that is one thing then uh, what is left out uh, uh, out here is uh, yeah uh, there are some uh, rules of operation ok this also uh, needs to be uh, specified now uh, before we start with the uh, flow chart 
uh, first in a transfer from source to bus to destination uh, takes you know, a one state time uh, that means uh, we are, we are when once uh, the time taken for an uh, data to be transferred from register to uh, alu right uh, or from uh, alu to to term, some register or from uh, alu to you know, uh, the program counter uh, this also needs to be incremented so that will also be done so they will all take you know, one uh, state time okay now uh, state time is just an uh, execution cycle okay that is time taken to complete one particular uh, task okay so uh, don't uh, mix it up with the clock frequency like like uh, there might be requirement of four clock cycles or six clock cycles for one uh, state time for one execution okay uh, so uh, so don't uh, no, confuse it with the uh, if you have read about 8086 we saw that in the state diagram uh, for read operation around four clock cycles were required for write operation so uh, similarly here also uh, we will not talk about uh, will not complicate as of now talking about the number of clock cycles uh, we will just uh, uh, keep it simple uh, telling you one operation will take one uh, state time okay the state time will have multiple frequencies which time being uh, we are not interested in okay now the source can drive up to three uh, destination nodes uh, that means parallelly suppose a data from alu and needs to be uh, transferred to uh, a no, few registers it can parallelly give it to uh, t1 uh, right, uh, right from uh, from uh, uh, from t it, it gives an output to t1 from t1 parallelly we can give it to uh, maximum up to uh, three registers okay uh, the same way uh, from uh, from a register data can come to uh, one more uh, alu it can also go to uh, address output right so because some so when we do then uh, memory uh, addressing right the contents of the memory location is given in one register okay that we know that that kind of addressing is also possible in that case uh, we might want to uh, transfer the contents of the register into the memory location okay uh, into ao buffer and parallelly we might want to increase the uh, no, contents of that register so that the next memory location uh, we are ready to fetch that so we can do parallel operation that is the contents of the register can parallelly go to AO and also parallelly go to ALU but they can't uh, no, uh, okay so that kind of operations are uh, permitted okay maximum uh, from a source uh, three destinations you can have up to three destinations so these are some of the assumptions which we are uh, making okay uh, and this we discussed k can have uh, th this can have a zero or plus uh, one or minus one uh, and then um, alu whatever is the operation of the alu uh, that is available in uh, t1 register and uh, uh, ao activates the on chip external bus uh, uh, no, controller that means whenever we need this is external uh, bus address so whenever we need to get an data from an uh, external memory so that particular address is going to be uh, placed into AO uh, which will trigger the external bus so these are some of the basic uh, assumptions uh, which we need to uh, make okay uh, then uh, here this ALU this is the a ALU block right this is an ALU block uh, we also need to specify what are the uh, jobs the ALU can do okay so uh, this we discussed last time so we'll uh, quickly have a, a revision of uh, what we learned last time uh, so if you see here uh, uh, this is an uh, adder subtractor 32 uh, 32 means it, it's a 32 bit uh, adder subtractor so you have uh, data A coming you have data B coming uh, so if you, you will see here 310 it is written that that means A is a 32 bit data uh, similarly B is a 32 bit uh, data right and uh, and you have a this is known as an, a multiplexer right so now uh, if you give see uh, it says uh, no, uh, alu c means alu uh, control right so the control is an uh, four bit uh, four bit data uh, so out of that uh, four bit the uh, third bit like 0 1 2 the third bit will tell whether it is to be uh, subtracted okay if it is 1 uh, it means it will do a subtraction if it is 0 uh, it will uh, do an uh, addition okay uh, and then the alu 0 and 1 that is the uh, first two bits of the uh, no, uh, control bit will activate this uh, multipl uh, multiplexer okay so uh, what it will do is for a uh, 0 0 uh, this will be uh, no, routed to the output 
now if you see for the add operation so it has to be 0 0 and for subtraction also 0 0 because this is adder subtraction block so the, these two first two bits has to be 0 0 so these two bits will come from here and activate this multiplexer so this uh, output of the adder subtractor uh, will be uh, uh, routed towards the final output so this has to be uh, 0 0 and this has to be uh, 0 0 and we also said the third bit is going to uh, if it is 1 out here then it, it will be a subtraction so for subtraction it is 1 and for addition uh, this is uh, 0 here so these are the two uh, no, control words so you need to uh, no, uh, know these things uh, no, properly okay uh, now now if you see here uh, this is an uh, and gate okay now this is not a uh, single and gate uh, remember there are uh, 32 such and gates okay they are in in, in parallel uh, first 0 0 bit uh, will be you know, and, uh, and operation would happen between those two uh, similarly between 1 bit and 1 bit of these two uh, and, and similarly the MSB and MSB of the, those two bits and you know, there will be an uh, and which will be done right uh, similarly or will be done here again this is an uh, multiplexer used here uh, and and it is controlled by the uh, second bit like here you know, uh, 0 uh, did uh, addition and one did subtraction right uh, similarly here uh, zero will do and and one will do or, or right so uh, so again you will find here and uh, uh, zero is uh, <coughs> the, the second bit that right uh, zero uh, and one here so that will do uh, and and or right uh, whereas now the output from here is connected to the uh, one out here so for that for yeah, and hence if, if this outputs okay uh, from from this module uh, from this multiplexer if this has to be uh, rooted out now you got to give a uh, 0 1 0 1 uh, here okay so this if it is this line is if it is 0 1 then and or or okay through this box and that will be uh, rooted out so so these are the uh, control uh, words for and and or operation right okay so these are known as the uh, control uh, signals which has to be given to the uh, alu if i uh, go back here now this is uh, alu right so one more, all these instructions which are written in the memory that is being brought and by the in instruction fetch register it will be given to an uh, an uh, instruction an uh, uh, execution unit uh, 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 instruction decoder and and that decoded information has to come to alu okay what is a decoded information is nothing but uh, these the, these control word needs the alu needs to be told to what kind of an operation it needs to do okay uh, uh, similarly you can have an uh, xor operation um, or you can load the data uh, immediate data okay uh, into an uh, register right into into the uh, upper like, like we uh, discussed uh, earlier uh, when we were learning about the min instructions that uh, only data can be loaded into the uh, upper uh, uh, high bits of the uh, <coughs> uh, register so if you see here so this 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 data is uh, coming here right no, okay uh, so uh, this can be as uh, uh, xor can be uh, selected by zero here okay and uh, this can be reg uh, uh, registered uh, an LUI uh, that is an uh, uh, load upper uh, through 1. So, you have uh, this 0 uh, and 1, 0 for XOR and 1. And now the output of this MUX can be selected by uh, 2. So, that is why uh, you have an, a 1 0 here for these two operations for, for this to be uh, rooted. Uh, similarly, say last you have a uh, shift register. Uh, in the shift register, we know it is an 32-bit uh, uh, no, shift uh, uh, data available. So, you can have a maximum. Uh, no, so, you need to specify how many bits it has to shift, right? So, uh, 30 for, for so you have to give uh, uh, what is the quantum of shift required. Uh, so, uh, it can vary from 0 to 32. So, 5 bits will be used here. So, that is why uh, A40, uh, like so the data is available in uh, B and uh, A will specify on a, uh, how much only the first 5 bits it will specify by how much amount it needs to be uh, shifted. So, the entire C if you see 0 to 31 is not used, used there only 0 to 4 because total only 32 is required to be specified as SA right and, and then you have the uh, uh, here the data coming from from B out here right and also uh, you have 
uh, uh, no, the control bit 2 uh, will say whether it has to uh, shift right or left. If it is 1, it will shift towards right. If it is 0, uh, it will shift towards the uh, left. And, and similarly, if it is 1, it will do an arithmetic shift and if it is 0, uh, it will do an uh, logical shift, right. So, so these are the, so you have these various uh, combinations because of that, right. An arithmetic shift, uh, logical left, uh, shift uh, right and uh, shift and uh, right arithmetic like logical left uh, that means this is this is this has to be zero and this also has to be zero then it will be left and logical so you have an uh, <coughs> Uh, uh, 0 0 uh, out here right because this is a uh, 2 and 3 uh, and then if, if this data needs to be uh, selected so i have to give uh, 3 here so that is why uh, for all for all the uh, here if, if this data needs to be given here uh, here it has to be uh, 1 1 right so so this these 1 ones right so that is how this uh, uh, alu works out so these are the various functions which an uh, uh, alu can uh, do now, if you see uh, in the flowchart method, uh, so uh, right now uh, these blocks, and uh, <coughs> I will quickly go through this, we did it in the last time. So, uh, uh, when we do the actual flowcharts, this will be more clear. Okay. So, flowcharts, uh, what it does is, uh, we are going to uh, write, uh, no, <coughs> map all the uh, ISAs as execution uh, units. Okay. So, that is the uh, step 1 which we are going to do. Uh, we will start with this today, then things will be uh, clear. Okay. Uh, and once the uh, flow chart is ready, uh, then uh, we are going to write the uh, control uh, word for that. Okay. Uh, and <coughs> once the control words are done, in the step 3, uh, we are going to uh, do the uh, design of the uh, control word uh, decoders. Okay. So, when we do each one of them, it will be uh, clear. And in the uh, step 4, uh, you have instruction uh, decoders uh, and then uh, you have an, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, right, an, uh, a bus controller and, and then, then the uh, uh, final uh, state and uh, you have the uh, state sequence uh, also to be designed. So, these are the several steps which are involved. So, we will take uh, one at a time then it will be uh, clear. Okay. Uh, so, uh, now before uh, doing that, one last thing which we need to remember is the uh, format. Okay, what is the instruction set uh, format? Uh, if you see the instruction set format, okay, whenever we write an ISA, okay, it will have an opcode. Uh, opcode means whether it is add or uh, subtract. So, that needs to be uh, specified. Okay, the uh, operand like which register from which register uh, the data uh, is to be taken, uh, that needs to be specified. Now, that one will be register, the second could be an register or it could be an, a memory. So, uh, so that mode specifies whether it is register or it is a memory uh, and the third one will be an, uh, a register like and, and there could be a displacement also. Uh, displacement means uh, I can have uh, a, a data coming from a memory uh, whose memory will be given by the uh, contents of the register plus plus some displacement also you can specify. So, this you have uh, done in your 8086 class also right. So, these are the uh, instruction for uh, instruction, uh, instruction format ok. So, we are going to assume that and this is the uh, kind of uh, instruction format which we are going to uh, use ok. And then we are also uh, assuming that uh, there are uh, n number of registers which are uh, available. So, we will start with assuming that we, we have 32 uh, total registers. In case uh, we are running short of registers, then uh, if for a specific uh, application that we will uh, increase the number of registers or if we uh, find that it is uh, no, the registers are in excess, we will uh, decrease the number of registers. Okay. Uh, so, uh, that is what uh, this is. So, uh, and also we will start with, uh, we are assume, we will uh, initially start with, we have only uh, these many instructions available with us, ok. Uh, and uh, 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 add and uh, branch if 0, uh, load, uh, pop, uh, push, store and uh, subtract, ok. So, we will assume that uh, we are, this is going to be the uh, starting point. Uh, so, uh, add is going to uh, add this data and is going to do bitwise and uh, branch F0 that means the contents of uh, two registers uh, will be compared and if it is uh, 0 then then it will jump to some place ok. Uh, where will it jump ok? The uh, address where it is to be jumped uh, will be available uh, in some register. So, when we write an 
bz command okay we need to uh, specify two registers suppose rx okay uh, and an ry so it is going to uh, compare the contents of these two uh, registers okay uh, and then and if it is zero then it will jump to some memory location and to what memory location okay that uh, will be uh, specified with with uh, some uh, other register so that also uh, needs to be uh, specified so that is why it says uh, register indirect only so uh, once this condition is met okay then the memory uh, it will jump to some other next instruction uh, now will it uh, to fetch the next instruction it will jump to some other memory uh, whose contents will be uh, uh, given in some uh, register out here right so accordingly the program so n n normally what happens if i uh, go back Uh, here the program uh, after every instruction the program counter is uh, incremented by one so automatically the next instruction will be fetched from the memory but in case an a jump instruction is and en en encountered and the condition is satisfied uh, then we might have will have to uh, increase uh, instead of uh, increasing the program counter by one uh, the, the new memory location where I need to uh, jump and get the instruction. So, that has to be loaded into the uh, program counter and from the program counter uh, it will be uh, given to the IRF and from the uh, IRF it, 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 that data will be fetched and given to uh, IRE. So, that is how uh, things move out here. So, Okay, uh, then uh, I have an uh, load. Okay, uh, load means the data from the memory will be uh, loaded into an uh, register. Okay, uh, now uh, uh, for here also, like I explained, so uh, how does an uh, load works? That needs to be uh, uh, clear. Okay, to load an instruction, what we need to do is right now first the address needs to be uh, placed okay from which memory the data needs to be loaded uh, that needs to be uh, placed here so in in the first cycle uh, the data from where okay uh, so whenever we uh, need to bring a data from uh, into a register uh, from a memory we need to uh, place the uh, data into the uh, uh, AO. Okay, so now uh, once you place the uh, address out here, the data will be available in D, uh, DI. So one cycle, you know, it will take. And in the next cycle, uh, from from this DI register, the data will be brought into you know, one of the uh, registers out here. So it will take uh, two cycles. Okay, remember that. Okay, whenever a data needs to be brought from the memory, there are two distinct steps. First the uh, location of the uh, memory needs to be put it into the uh, AO. Okay. Once it is put immediately the data from the memory will be available in uh, DI. Okay. They, they are not two different steps. Okay. They are a single step. Okay. The moment the address is placed here immediately the data uh, that memory will be activated and uh, simultaneously that data will be uh, available in uh, DI, but that will not come into the register. In the next cycle the data from the di will be brought into the uh, register uh, similarly when whenever a data needs to be uh, returned to the uh, uh, no, uh, to the memory uh, from the register you are going to uh, write an uh, data to uh, do right and and the address from where the data uh, the address to which location the data needs to be written will be placed into the uh, ao register okay so that is how we uh, store a data okay so uh, that is what uh, these are the instructions which okay that is our uh, load uh, so uh, pop data is uh, okay whenever uh, uh, some uh, uh, we need uh, some data needs to be, so there will be a uh, stack register so that whenever we are going to uh, 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 temporarily put that data we can put it into the stack register and and once you put the uh, uh, post increment that means the uh, the uh, stack whenever we write a pop command okay the address of the stack uh, register will be increased and then the uh, data will be returned into that uh, into that stack similarly when we write an uh, push 
uh, command then the stack register uh, will be uh, <coughs> no once the data will be written here and then the uh, stack counter will increase whereas in the push command the, the data it will first decrease the uh, stack counter and then the data will be brought okay uh, so this is similar to what ha happens in uh, uh, at86 and then you have the uh, store command okay then you have the subtract command so we are going to assume that these commands are available with us okay so and then uh, test okay uh, test is nothing but um, it, it, if i uh, write in a te uh, test rx and uh, ry okay it will do an uh, bit wise and uh, and of all the all the 32 bits uh, here right and the 32 bits okay bit wise and operation will be uh, done uh, out here right and if it is in a uh, uh, and then uh, but the contents of rx and ry uh, will not be uh, na, uh, disturbed okay the contents of rx and ry will even after the after the test operation it will remain the same okay uh, and only thing is the zero flag might get affected and the right in in case and uh, all the data is zero then the zero flag will get affected right and uh, so so we can see the zero flag uh, so if if both rx and ry bitwise they are uh, all different then the zero flag will get affected okay so only the flags in this operation only the uh, flags will get affected zero flag the sign flag and another flags so so accordingly the decision will be uh, taken okay for executing a jump or whatever it is okay so uh, that is the difference between an uh, test and an and operation generally when we uh, do the and operation the contents of one of the register gets disturbed in a test operation that doesn't happen the contents of both the registers will be uh, preserved okay so that is the difference in an uh, test and normal uh, and operation right so now we uh, start with uh, now how to uh, make an uh, flow chart so we first take a uh, simple instruction okay and now what what we are going to do in a flow chart is for all these instructions we are uh, going to uh, define how the processor is going to work okay so we are going to make a flow chart and subsequently uh, we are going to learn uh, how to make this flow charts into uh, hardware that is going to be the uh, second step so first of all uh, we have a set of instructions now we are going to learn uh, how to make an a flow chart out of these uh, uh, instructions right uh, so what if you see here the first instruction out here is add rx ry okay uh, so this is the uh, kind of uh, instructions which we are going to implement in uh, ar means uh, through an a uh, bus okay so the contents of uh, rx and the contents of ry needs to be uh, uh, added okay uh, and then the uh, this is the uh, source and uh, this is the uh, destination and uh, this is the uh, bus right so you need this is the uh, format okay so you need to remember this format uh, this is the source the result is to be placed in ry the contents of rx and ry needs to be added and then it is needs to be uh, put it into this destination so the destination is given always in the uh, end so now for this instruction so this is how the uh, no, instruction format is there now this needs to be uh, mapped into a uh, flow chart okay so this is known as so how we do make a flow chart is uh, first we write an, uh, and out here that means we are telling the alu so whatever these uh, this is going to be an and operation and we are also going to uh, write r into r and uh, r to r that means it is an a register to register uh, transfer uh, operation okay so we are saying the contents of rx register through a bus you are going uh, getting into alu okay so it will take uh, uh, parallelly uh, ry data through b bus is going to come into alu so this will take na uh, one one uh, uh, cycle okay is it understood okay contents of rx through an a bus so we have uh, two bus right so we have already assumed there will be a uh, two bus so contents of rx is through a bus is being brought to alu contents of ry through b bus is being brought to uh, alu right and now if you see once it is uh, brought uh, alu is not a uh, clock right so the moment this data comes here the output will be uh, available if i uh, go back here okay arithmetic logic unit is just a uh, combinational unit okay it, it is not an uh, 
uh, uh, clogged out here right so the moment this data is available the output will be available in the uh, t1 register we had discussed that output will be available in the uh, t1 register so in the next cycle so you don't have to uh, give uh, time for an uh, uh, alu to compute in the next cycle the output which is uh, a plus b is available in t1 uh, through b i am getting it to uh, r y okay here i can use uh, a also doesn't matter right so i can use either a or b uh, here also the, it is not necessarily that i use uh, a or, or b okay uh, so <coughs> right okay so if you see here uh, uh, add operation so how do i map this into uh, an, a flow chart i have add rx source uh, ry destination so first i write it is an register to register operation this flow chart will help the hardware in engineer to design that we will see how to design from this hardware uh, from this flow chart how to make an hardware that we will see um, after the mid sum exams but right now we are focusing on just how to write uh, make a flow chart from these instructions so register to register add add means this is an add operation if it is a subtract operation we will write subtract here right it is add register to register in the first we are going from uh, rx to a and then we are also getting from uh, r y to uh, no, from r x to a l u through a bus r y to a l u through b bus and then in the next cycle uh, the the addition of these two will be available in uh, t1 because the output of the a l u is avail always available in t1 through the b bus we are getting into uh, r y okay uh, uh, the uh, one thing which would be a, a little bit uh, confusing subsequently will be like uh, when we write in uh, flow chart it will be written in uh, alphabetic order okay uh, these are all happening in uh, parallel okay but then uh, still we write this in uh, alphabetic uh, order okay uh, so uh, r x okay and then r y so this is always uh, written in alphabetic uh, order okay uh, now now we take in a second example uh, where i have to add right uh, r x okay uh, through an uh, uh, bus uh, so this is also an uh, source and uh, this is the bus uh, through uh, and the contents have to be placed into a memory uh, whose uh, lo memory address is given in the ry register right so so now this is going to be a uh, register to uh, uh, memory an uh, uh, operation so i write r and uh, uh, this register to memory operation i need to specify in the flow chart it's an and operation so add operation so i put an uh, add out here right now first is uh, i am going to add rx with some data which is available in the uh, uh, in some memory uh, whose address is given by ry so i need to fetch that data first do the computation and then put back that data uh, there right so uh, first operation is to get that operation uh, get that data from that memory so how do i put so in into the address bar okay into the address bar i am going to put the contents of ry so ry i am going to put into the contents into the through the b bus into i can use a also right okay so uh, uh, so into the address bar uh, into the address and uh, buffer so this is the first thing which i will do here and the moment i uh, put this address so the data which is there in the memory will come into the uh, di register okay this is what we discussed here right so if i uh, go back uh, here Oh, sorry yeah uh, here once i put the address here from the memory that will be available into uh, div set right similar to to write the data i put address and i will put into a do so that is what exactly uh, we are uh, doing here okay uh, here uh, now uh, the mo i am putting this address here now if you see here this is written in the bottom and this is written in the top uh, actually this will happen first and this will happen second but then uh, we are writing it in alphabetic order okay because okay so this might appear a little confusing but you will have to get used to it because this is the way a flow chart is written it is written in the alphabetic order but this cannot happen before this right so uh, this will happen simultaneously but the moment this is put only then this will happen but it is 
are written other way around okay now uh, from the contents of the uh, di through b register it is brought to alu and from the uh, contents of rx it is brought into alu so this addition is done okay now once the addition is done the result will be available in uh, t1 so from the t1 it has to be uh, brought through a bus to the uh, do that is the data out register right and also the uh, ao register needs to be uh, activated so again the contents of that memory is given in ry register right so that is again uh, given to uh, ao so this is how uh, this has this this particular uh, instruction so you, now you will find there is an, uh, three clock cycles are required in the previous only uh, an, uh, three an, uh, uh, <coughs> state cycles are required not clock cycles uh, uh, two state cycles uh, here uh, three state cycles are required here because you additionally there is one data which needs to be uh, brought from the uh, <coughs> uh, memory so that that's why one additional uh, 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 state cycle is required here uh, so now also uh, whenever uh, we uh, write a pro program okay uh, when we, whenever we do an uh, instruction we also have to parallelly uh, fetch the data from the uh, next uh, <coughs> Uh, for the next uh, uh, instruction to be uh, executed right so when 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 this is happening when, when this is happening right parallelly what we need to do is uh, from the uh, no, external data bus okay uh, the data is brought into the instruction fetch register okay uh, now before that this happens okay now again here there will be an, it is written in uh, alphabetic order so we are assuming that the program counter now this instruction this is the present instruction which is being countered right while this is being done we will assume that the the program counter is pointing towards the next instruction right so the, the data of the program counter okay through uh, through the a b data bus is being put into the address bus okay so this will be done first and now since once it is there uh, into the address bus uh, from that memory location that instruction will be fetched into the irf okay so this is happening uh, first okay after that the bus is now and uh, so the any time an instruction starts with fetching the any this is an instruction uh, set okay it it starts with you know this this fetch instruction that is the next instruction is uh, fetched into the irf so that while this instruction is being happening uh, parallelly you know the uh, this is being uh, decoded so the first you know, instruction will be uh, this uh, is this uh, clear to all of you yeah okay and uh, now this this is the normal instruction with an uh, register to register which is happening so once this instruction is done we also need to be uh, increase the uh, program uh, 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 counter data so that the it is uh, uh, so that we need to increase it by one right so that the next instruction can be uh, fetched so you have an a program counter data through a register is being um, brought to alu and we are uh, writing a plus one so uh, we saw this plus for this plus one uh, to the alu if you see here in the uh, main diagram out here one uh, k was given which can have a uh, value uh yeah uh, here this k okay k can have a uh, plus 1 uh, minus 1 or 0 so that is the reason uh, you can uh, use that uh, because that provision is already there uh, in our uh, alu so we are writing just plus 1 and alu so this plus 1 need not be brought in from some other uh, register okay uh, and once this result will be available once this is done in one cycle the result will be uh, available in t1 so the program counter is going to be uh, updated now here so so now if you see here uh, this is the actual instruction before you know, this actual instruction is being executed uh, what i am going to do is uh, first i am going to uh, get the next instruction okay uh, into the uh, irf register because uh, the next instruction is available in the uh, program counter okay the, from the program where is the program counter again like I, uh, I say the program counter is also part of the execution unit itself right this is the program counter you know, which keeps a track of uh, where uh, uh, which line i am executing in the in, from the pro main uh, program right so so that is available here 
okay uh, so so that is available here so this is going to be the uh, through b that address is being uh, uh, data is placed in the address and once it is placed that program whatever is written that line will be brought into the uh, instruction fetch register okay now uh, decoding uh, starts out here and then parallelly i am doing an an uh, arithmetic logical operations here once i complete the arithmetic logical operations uh, i will also increase the an account of the uh, pc okay so for that i am doing this plus 1 out here and now the pc has got the next data now since this now if you see here in this instruction i have made the pc ready for the next instruction okay so that is why when the next uh, cycle starts it will start with this okay because the pc has already been an uh, updated out here so that this is how the uh, flow begins now if you see here uh, this box i have put a place then a red box here uh, that means uh, during this particular instruction uh, the data is being fetched from the external data bus so that needs to be activated so wherever there is an uh, external data bus uh, uh, activity we we place a box here so that that will tell the hardware uh, engineer okay for this activity the external uh, data bus has to be uh, activated okay so this is uh, one more uh, example out here okay uh so <clears throat> let, let's take an, uh, uh, one more example out here uh, here also right this is for register to memory also these were the uh, three instructions which we saw right in the uh, previous example where uh, rb and uh, is put into an uh, uh, data of ry is through b is put into the uh, ao register and the data is being built so we we discussed this there will be three cycles here uh, here also you will see the first instruction out here uh, will be the from the pc it will put to uh, uh, from the program counter through b bus the data is put into ao register and from uh, from the uh, uh, external data bus it is given to the instruction so first that instruction will be fetched the next cycle uh, which needs to be executed so parallelly uh, this will be decoded while we are doing this computation okay and once this computation is done uh, again uh, we do the, these two. so this is this and these blocks will be uh, common to all the instruction this will change depending on uh, what kind of instruction is available here right so this block uh, and these two blocks will be uh, common to all the instructions okay uh, the first instruction is getting the next instruction okay up to the fetch register and the last two instruction is to uh, increase the count of the uh, program uh, counter okay so once this uh, alu is free uh, we are going to get the count of uh, the data of the pc add one and uh, put that uh, uh, plus one data into the program uh, counter okay so uh, these instructions which is written in blue will be common to all the instructions okay uh, so these are known as uh, level 1 uh, flow charts okay now uh, uh, what is a level 1 uh, flow chart is uh, what is this what uh, <coughs> uh, this is just an example of a flow chart and and for level 1 flow chart uh, we write okay uh, for each instruction right we are going to make a uh, flow chart and we are going to keep the housekeeping tasks okay uh, and the uh, instructions uh, and the instructions and uh, in uh, as uh, parallel operations okay that means uh, here we have uh, clubbed everything uh, together uh, in level 1 uh, these instructions are known as the actual task and 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 these what is written here these are known as the uh, housekeeping task which we are going to treat it uh, separately in the level 1 so if i take an example it will be clear uh, here like register to register and uh, uh, this is the one uh, which we discuss right register to register the contents of register through a it is brought to alu contents of r uh, r y uh, is brought into the alu and then the uh, addition result which is available in t uh, is given to uh, is placed into r y so it takes an uh, uh, two cycles so this is known as operational task okay the uh, housekeeping task is uh, listed uh, separately out here in level 1 all right uh, so uh, here so if you see uh, these three tasks are going to be common for all the uh, uh, instructions right so what we do is uh, firstly uh, so for any instructions first we'll make level 1 uh, flow charts okay uh, and then uh, depending on that 
okay uh, so then we will try to insert we have to see whether this can parallelly happen here here or here okay then we can uh, merge it that we will do it in uh, level 2 okay uh, first in level 1 flow chart the first step is uh, to make these insections as uh, two separate columns the operational task and the uh, housekeeping task okay so once you do this and then in level 2 uh, we will try and see whether while this is doing here uh, can i do this if you see here uh, the data from uh, t1 through b is going to r y that means uh, a is free right so can i get this uh, into here so that to reduce the total number of clock cycles can i do that so that kind of analysis will be do we will do it in a uh, level 2 okay for level 1 uh, we won't uh, do that we just write these two as uh, separate entities operation task and uh, housekeeping uh, task okay uh, this is for again a register to memory operation now this again we discussed right so so if you see here uh, uh, here also now from the t1 this data needs to go to the memory location so this is also a you know, red mark is placed here because uh, they mean that the external data bus is activated right so from r y the data is placed into the uh, address output buffer so data is brought into the di from di it is brought to uh, alu and rx is also and this they both get added once this added the data is available in uh, t1 so that data is given into the uh, output uh, uh, buffer right data out buffer and simultaneously where it has to be written so from the uh, r y that uh, address bus will be uh, address output buffer contents of r y will be written into the uh, uh, a o buffer so if you see here so the, here also the uh, external bus is activated so that is why we place uh, these two so these are the uh, operational uh, tasks out here uh, and and similarly if you see here these are the housekeeping task okay so this is from the pc okay the, the data is being uh, fetched out here and once these operations are done the contents of an uh, pc is increased by one uh, and then and the and then the uh, <coughs> the uh, pc plus one data is put into uh, pc and also from the irf and uh, that is the, from the fetch register data is being this is the addition thing which we are now uh, writing from the IRF data needs to come to uh, IRE. So uh, these instructions will be uh, common to all the uh, instructions here. And, uh, here we see from uh, here and uh, here it, it is the same. This part is same. Only this part is uh, changing. Okay. So the housekeeping task remains uh, same. Okay. Now in in level two. Uh, so this is the uh, last part. We'll see. Then we'll take a break. In the level two. Okay, the house we we we, we merge these uh, operation task and the uh, housekeeping uh, task. Okay, so we try to merge it so that uh, we save time, you know, number of cycle of operations. Now uh, here for register to uh, register operation, if you see here uh, from register it is brought to ALU, uh, from Y it is brought to uh, uh, ALU, right? Uh, <coughs> and also if you see here. Uh, this is uh, instructions is being uh, brought uh, to the uh, instruction uh, fetch so i have put that here so now from uh, so this is this will happen first right so from the uh, pc it is brought through the a register uh, through the uh, ao right and and also to the uh, alu okay uh, now if you see here why why i have done this instruction first okay uh, i have done this instruction uh, first okay i have computed the value of an uh, uh, addition uh, r y and r b it is available in uh, t1 okay so in the next cycle okay i am getting the uh, program uh, <coughs> pc contents to a uh, and, uh, as well as to the address uh, on, uh, ao and to the alu because we if you uh, remember the rules uh, one data can be brought and uh, data from one and uh, register can be from one source can be given simultaneously to uh, three registers right to three destinations so here from the program counter i am getting it to the address ao and also to the uh, alu right since i am putting it to uh, ao it will fetch the uh, 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 the next instruction into the irf and it, the decoding would start here parallelly okay uh, the data is brought to the uh, alu also and and to the alu uh, plus one is also being given here 
right and all now if you see here a register now this is the a bus which is engaged in in this particular activity the b bus is free so from the previous operation i have in t1 a plus b so i am going to get the contents into uh, r y here right so and and in the next uh, instruction from t1 because now uh, this is the data which is available from the previous cycle that is uh, addition of a and b which i am moving into r y uh, in this particular uh, now operation what is happening is it is it is again <coughs> uh, uh, alu plus 1 so that result will be available now in t1 so that is being brought into the uh, pc right and then from the instruction fetch register uh, it is going into uh, into the execution register now if you see here uh, this particular uh, this it, it required 1 2 3 4 uh, 5 cycles here right there were uh, 5 cycles here right I including the housekeeping and the uh, uh, normal operations right they have been returned separately so there were a uh, total uh, 5 here now even 11 1 also these, these were the two operations and these were the uh, uh, three operations for register to register okay now all those five uh, have been uh, 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 so arranged so that within three uh, 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 operation cycles this task will be uh, completed okay so if you see where to fix what okay so that is what is done in uh, level two so, so it is merging of these two uh, 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 housekeeping and the operational task okay right so what is done is in the first cycle contents of rx through a is brought to alu uh, and also the contents of ry through b is brought into the alu so the result will be available in uh, t1 right so from t1 in the next cycle it is brought to uh, ry so the, that uh, that that the operational task is completed in two cycles okay now uh, initially we discussed we are going to put this in the into the uh, 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 we will start with this okay but that is not an efficient way so we have um, pushed that thing into the uh, uh, second as a second activity okay uh, so the advantage out here is uh, while we are moving the contents of uh, p into a o okay to fetch the next register uh, simultaneously we are getting the contents of pc to uh, alu also so the moment i am putting this data into ao uh, in the irf the next instruction will be uh, brought okay and also i am giving a plus 1 to the alu since i am giving plus 1 to the alu so i am going to get an uh, an, uh, data which is pc plus 1 whatever was the contents plus 1 that data will be available so in the next cycle from t1 that data will be brought into the pc so now if you see here the contents of the pc will be incremented by 1 and also from the instruction fetch register it will be brought into the uh, instruction and uh, uh, execution register so if you see here the housekeeping and this is uh, combined together and instead of an uh, uh, five uh, cycles it now just requires uh, three uh, cycles so these are known as level 2 uh, flow charts so you need to uh, remember uh, refer to these charts whenever we are making na uh, instruction so these are known as uh, level 2 flow charts uh, similarly uh, we can have a uh, level 2 flow chart uh, for uh, uh, register to memory uh, operation also okay uh, uh, here how it is done is now if you see here the contents of the uh, pc okay uh, because now here the data data you know, which needs to be added in, in, in this case the data was available in rx and ry that is why we initially started off with this um, but in when, when we are doing register to memory the data is not available at all right so now what we are going to do is uh, uh, so we need to fetch that data so uh, before that so we can uh, do that the contents of pc if you see here is put into uh, through a register it is put to uh, ao as well as alu and we are doing a uh, plus one and uh, 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 to the alu so this will what it will increase the uh, um, in the t1 register you will have pc plus one so that in the next cycle you are doing an uh, 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 t1 through a to pc so the contents of the pc register will get uh, increased by one 
and and since the PC you, know, you have put it into AO, so that data will be uh, now, uh, whatever from that memory location that instruction will be uh, brought to the um, IRF. Okay. Uh, so that the pre prefetch you know, for so while doing the next cycle the instruction has already been a uh, free prefetched for the next next instruction so that is happening there right so uh, now if you see here uh, from register now uh, uh, why okay now again here uh, now the contents of the so that that has happened one particular uh, uh, task is over now another task was to get now we are doing uh, contents of the a memory whose address is given in ry register that also needs to be fetched so from uh, ry through b it is put into uh, ao and uh, t2 this is a temporary register it is put into the address buffer so the moment that address address is activated so the data from that memory will be brought to di so this happens first and this happens second but then it is written in an alphabetic order so that is why it is a bit confusing but you will have to uh, uh, understand this this is this is written in uh, uh, in alphabetic order so but they happen uh, almost parallel the moment this is uh, this data is put into an AO so from the uh, memory that data will be available into the uh, DI register so in the next cycle from the DI it is brought to ALU from RX it is brought to ALU so addition would happen right so once that addition is happened the result will be available in uh, T1 so through A you are going to put it into uh, DO register right so this is again this is common to all from IRF the it will be given to IRE uh, and now here now the RY the contents of RY was given to AO and it's also stored in a temporary register T2 okay that is indication of uh, where the finally the data needs to be written so that was given as, as RY right so that is why this uh, T2 temporary register is used okay so, so that to preserve this uh, address okay so that address where the data finally needs to be written is available in uh, T2 register out here right so from T2 uh, through B right it, it is uh, that address is given to the address out buffer so that the data which is the result of the addition is which is available in t1 is placed into do uh, and where it is to be written that is available in t2 because the contents of ry has been brought it into the uh, t2 register out here so and that way now wherever you find uh, edb you will put a red uh, box out here okay you will put it a shaded box here to indicate that external uh, uh, bus has been activated so this is how we write uh, write and uh, level 2 flow chart okay so uh, that's all for today what we have uh, done is we have tried to uh, understand level 1 and level 2 uh, for two uh, uh, for add add operations uh, register to regi uh, to register to register and from register to memory okay so the, we'll in the next class we will take a uh, uh, few more uh, examples so that uh, how to make uh, flow charts will be uh, even more uh, clear okay uh, so uh, we will uh, stop it here for time being and take a 10 minutes break and then uh, we will uh, learn something more in very luck okay thanks a lot